Daniel, first of all, thank you um, for joining us. Thanks for having me. I want to get into the experiences, obviously. I think it's, it's going to be an eye-opener for a lot of people at home, but how you actually got to this place and how you got to <laughs> Alabama and Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, and all points there uh, is almost as fascinating um, as some of the outcome. So you're in London. Um, you, you're there with another guy. You're working for an investment bank at the time. And this guy's got Alabama roots. And talk about the conversation that led you to say, sure, um, I'm going to pick up the phone, tell my parents basically that everything that I've achieved at this point, I'm going to put on hold and go to Alabama to try and get people to sign up for health care. How did that conversation go? It went well, actually, surprisingly. <laughs> um, my best friend in England is this guy, Josh Carpenter, who's a Rhodes Scholar, went to UAB, University of Alabama, Birmingham. He's from Florence in the northwest part of the state. Yep. And October comes around, and like any American, we're reading these headlines saying to ourselves, man, this is a disaster. Yes. Uh, and no matter what you believe politically, mm -hmm. October, November, it was a disaster. And that wasn't particularly insightful of us. But what we said to each other was, well, what could we do? You know, we're 25. Um, we're not that far out of college. He's still a student. He's getting his doctorate. And we thought, well, what's missing from this effort is that the emphasis is in the wrong place. It shouldn't be on what the politicians are saying. It should be on getting health care for your family. Um, because to have a system that works to actually access hospitals for families to stay together, people need to be able to go to the doctor. And that has nothing to do with politics in Washington or yep. any state capital. So you guys, uh, with no funding to speak of, a little <laughs> bit here, um, decide to head back to Alabama, or in his case, head back, bring you with him, and start uh, Bama Covered, right? And to that end, one of the things that's borne out in the Times is a great piece that people may be familiar with the story is you decided to make this apolitical because Bama's a red, red state here. But one thing the state, I guess, has a, a proud history of is citizen uh, not only involvement, uh, but volunteerism, um, especially given the strong religious roots of so many people in the state. And you drew upon that, right? When you went around and said to people, listen, we can make better lots here for your fellow citizens if they have health coverage. Exactly. So that was not anything new. Um, and for me, it was actually my first time in the great state of Alabama. It is really, it is the most amazing place on earth because the sense of community is so palpable. Uh, you know, having grown up around New York, when you're on the subway in the city and you look someone in the eyes, they tend to look away, right? Or if you said, hey, how you doing? They'd think that guy's nuts. Whereas in Alabama, there is this unbelievable friendliness. Well, it's believable, but to, to yeah. New Yorkers, I guess it's unbelievable, where if you say to someone, hey, how are you? you they'll say, I'm great, how are you? And you can engage in a conversation. And ultimately, you know, when we think about what have we trained 600 college students to do, it was to engage in conversations about health care. And that's the army that you have with you. You guys co-founded the group here. You have college volunteers exclusively, pretty much, college kids, including conservative kids here. This isn't, you found the 600 liberals maybe in Alabama. You have <laughs> college kids across the political spectrum that share this common idea that, you know, they can do better here. Because as I understand it, the cutoff rate for Medicaid is three grand for a family of four, which is- It's the lowest in the country. Bizarre, okay. Yeah. So to that point, explain the initial conversation you have with one of the kids as to what your mission is and why everybody, regardless of politics, this is a good thing for these people. Well, it takes about 10 seconds looking at the health statistics in Alabama to realize that the state needs a lot of help. Right, it is bottom five across the board: diabetes, cholesterol, obesity, um, you know, infant mortality. You name it. And, and just about at the top and uninsured, right? Exactly. So, um, when you start talking to students who are from Alabama, whether you're at University of South Alabama in Mobile or up at University of Alabama, you know, Huntsville, up in the north of the state, they know the state of healthcare in Alabama. And when you start saying, "Listen," I'm not motivated by what the politicians are saying. I'm here to find a way alongside you to engage with people and help them figure out this issue. Because the other thing that no one has any confusion about is there is a lot of misinformation on the table right now when it comes to health care. Please explain to the public some of the most commonly asked, not just questions, but misconceptions you'd run into about the law. 
Um, and then the good and the bad. I mean, some of the legitimate concerns that after they go through the process uh, that they're still left with, but also some of the revelations that people say, my gosh, now I can go to the doctor. If you could, try and put a human face on what you found on the ground level. The biggest question we get over and over and over again is what, it, what am I signing up for? People I don't think know what it is, People right? don't know what this law has created, right? It has sh shaped the landscape of yep. American he health healthcare in a new way. And we always say, listen, well, in Alabama, different from New York uh, and in the tri-state area, there is not a lot of choice. Um, there is a near monopoly. There is one company, Blue Cross Blue Shield, that controls 90% of the market. It's offered, it's the only choice in 64 of the 67 counties. Yep. So we say, we are talking about Blue Cross, Blue Shield, private insurance, top of the line, potentially at a discount. And that's the other misconception, is that it's not affordable um, for me and my family. Well, depending on your income, you could be getting a $20, $50, $100 a month plan um, with lower costs, right? The best plan I've signed someone up for over a dozen times, $0, $100 deductible, and $500 out-of-pocket max. Really? So for some people, and it may not be your case, but for some people, there is a truly remarkable deal on the table. And shame on you if you don't at least know about it. One of the stories in that uh, same article, Daniel, was um, a person said, I'm afraid to call um, 911 even though my husband's having seizures here because he'll be so upset about the potential cost when he wakes up and you sign these people up, uh, this family up for health care. It's that acute, some of the life and death decisions people are playing around with because they don't have coverage, right? Well, they know they can't afford it. I mean, that's the other thing we say to student volunteers or to people we're you know, talking about health care with. It's we, everyone knows how unbelievably expensive medical, medical care is, right? You spend a minute in a hospital, you've probably been charged $1,000 in the emergency room before you've sneezed, right? And then, you know, yeah. it just... When you talk to CEOs of hospitals, as we have, they agree with you it's too expensive. But then again, they're writing off millions of dollars every year in bad hospital costs because people can't afford the expense and a lot of them aren't covered. Um, so that's one thing that's been universal is people understand how expensive it is. And you know, one of our, many of our volunteers have stories themselves, and I think that speaks to their motivation. Um, and why I got into this actually yeah. was um, I was at uh, a hospital in White Plains when, uh, you know, I fainted and my mother was standing there with me and she was scared as any mother is. And there was the nurse, there was a doctor, and then there was a financial counselor sitting next to her. Um, and that's when it hit me at the age of 23. I cannot believe in the United States of America that in our emergency rooms we have financial counselors. That's um, amazing. And, yeah. the th and it was a blessing that I was covered and, you know, I could hand over my card. I was working for, for the mayor in New York City at the time, but I just couldn't even believe the thought process. Um, and I've experienced that. I signed someone up in an emergency room in a hospital in Birmingham. Really? I his, sat with his mother last week in the ICU, um, and she had called me. A friend of hers had re referred her to, our, to Bama Covered. Her son was uninsured. He was in the ICU of a hospital. He had just been airlifted there, and she had to call to worry about the insurance. I could not believe that that, um, that exists in our country. And I was glad that we could help, right? Where would she have turned if, um, I, don't, I don't know. I, I hope she would have found help. Is it a tough sell convincing somebody to not only sign up but go through the process? And I know it, it's not a two-second process here. Is the sell harder than the perseverance they have to do to, from start to finish to complete the thing? I'm curious. You know, when the website was having difficulties, obviously it's different, you know, New York has its own exchange, yeah. which has been working flawlessly from the start. But um, in Alabama, we were dealing with the federal exchange and clearly there were issues. So when the website was working slowly or you couldn't get the email or couldn't mm. verify identity, then clearly it took a lot of will. But it, you know, if there's something that students really have and young people have is we've got the energy, yeah. right? <laughs> um, so we've been able to work with people and say, listen, this may take an hour of your time, um, but health insurance is worth more than an hour of your time with the cost of medical care, what it is in this country. And people have been willing to listen because 
we, you know, we say, listen, this isn't about the politics of it. This is what's on the table for you. Do you have you gotten your preventative care checkup this year, which will be free with your new insurance? You know, can you get the prescription drugs that you need? Um, can you go to the top specialist for whatever problem you have? And, and I think people can connect with that time and time again. And I mean, so many amazing word of mouth stories where we're, you know, we sign up the chef of a bar and he subsequently, you know, the next day there's an event and the entire staff is there because he got it for $30 and they all make kind of something similar and they couldn't believe. And, you know, it, it's too expensive for the employer to offer something. So you have the owner encouraging his employees saying, listen, I care about you. I want you to be healthy. I can't provide you, a, um, you know, I, I can't coverage, provide yeah. this, this coverage for you, but go check it out. If I multiplied your volunteer staff a thousandfold and you could do this coast to coast, do you believe the numbers that we're looking at now would also be multiplied? Yes, I definitely believe that um, because... For us, you know, when you ask... Because they haven't marketed it the right way, right? I mean, I, was, I thought when you said the first question I get asked, I thought they were going to say, how much is it going to cost me? But it, it's what is it? People still don't know what's in this thing. And, and, and shame on the administration for sales, marketing, whatever you want to call it. But still, that void, people will be able to fill misinformation into what it actually is so people don't know what they're signing up for. They just know there's a deadline, right? I think it's going to be iterative, right? If you look at, you know, what was amazing for me is sitting down with so many families who survive on so little. Yeah. Um, I mean, some making literally nothing, um, but others have their Social Security payments, their disability payments, their SSI, um, their veterans pensions, right? And those programs came into force in some time in our nation's history, and it probably wasn't pretty in the first year. Um, and so we, we think a lot and I think are inspired when Social Security was rolled out in the New Deal. I'm sure that there were kinks. Oh, um, and, and we went through the history not long ago. Medicare, the same thing as well. Dan, I'm curious. We sit down a year from now, five years from now. Do you think those people that you guys have canvassed and convinced and signed up are going to have buyer's remorse or are they going to say this was one of the smartest things they ever did? I mean, to step back a second, when we say what is Bama covered about, it's about educating people about health care options. And if enrollment is the right choice for you, then go for it. We can help you do that. Yep. There is not a doubt in my mind that the people who have gained access to health care will count it among the best decisions of their lives. Because we have worked with people whom we met in December, and subsequently one person I signed up had a stroke in January and was covered. Um, and, you know, that's two things. That's A, containing cost, right? That mm -hmm. could have meant bankruptcy for that, that man. Um, and he has children, and he provides for a grandchild as well. Um, but not just that. I mean, it's people who go to the doctor when they feel sick instead of trying to sleep it off. Yeah. Because he was not going to sleep off that stroke. Um, so for him, without a doubt, it was a life-changing decision in a literal sense. You went um, from London to now Birmingham, not uh, England, but uh, Alabama. I I'm curious, we've hit some of the deadlines that people have had to sign up for. Are you getting ready to pack the bags to go back uh, across the pond or has this thing impacted you that you're gonna be doing this for a while? I'm staying in Birmingham. You know, this has really changed my life and I think Josh would tell you the same thing. Um, it's, a, it's a truly remarkable state, the most wonderful people you've ever met. And uh, they've embraced me, and I've embraced them. You know, I've got my 205 cell phone number and my <laughs> Birmingham address and my Alabama plates on my, my old car. So things are, things are going well. Good for you. Well, hey, um, hey, we always like to think you can impact um, or like to try and impact lives. It's amazing not just yourself and the co-founder, but all those volunteers, all those kids, the people always uh, put down the millennials for not do, thinking about anything but themselves. What they've done down there, um, uh, that's a testament. Anyway, uh, I really appreciate a few minutes. Thank you Thank so you much. And me. I wish you the best of luck. doesn't seem like you need too much of it. <laughs> we need it. Thank you.